Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. Now this is kind of a optional tutorial because I'm going to show you how to use MySQL on the command line. If you don't know the command line for your system, if you don't know command line console commands, then you're going to get lost in this tutorial. But I would advise watching it anyway because it will give you a little bit more insight into how MySQL works. Uh, but don't worry about it because we're going to be using the workbench in subsequent tutorials. So now that I've installed MySQL and I've, I've made sure that it's stopped, it's not started at the moment, I'm going to go to Terminal on my Mac. So Windows has a Windows console and of course you have a terminal in whatever version of Linux you're using as well. Now my MySQL is actually installed. I tracked it down to the following directory. This is just for my particular system. I'm going to go to slash user local MySQL and of course on Windows the commands that you see here are going to be different. So you know you could either learn Windows console commands or just skip this tutorial as I, as I say. Let's go to that directory. Here's my actual MySQL installation. Now if we go to bin here we'll see there are lots of programs in there and there are two really important ones. One is called MySQL D and that's the actual server program. It's your actual database itself. So we could start that from the command line. If we added this directory, the directory I'm in, uh, to the path environment variable, and again if you Google for how to do that, for example, Windows 7 path environment variable or, you know, Linux add to path environment variable, then you could add that directory there and then you'd be able to type these commands, these programs that you see here from any location in your terminal. Otherwise, you're going to have to change to that this directory before you can run these. So let's try and run the MySQL, um, the MySQL server on the command line. So to do that, on a Mac and probably on Windows, I have to use a sudo command to run this as admin. And again, this is not going to apply to Windows. Let's run sudo dot slash mysql mysql d. And I'm going to specify hyphen u root. This specifies use the root user, which is the kind of default user for mysql. If you specify the password, you'll also need to say hyphen p and your password, like let me in, for example, with no spaces after the hyphen p. But I haven't specified a password, so I just need this. Let's run this. Um, you will have to enter your, your admin password, your user password, if you haven't already run sudo, if you're using Linux or Mac, that is. So now we can see it started up successfully, and I'm going to start a new terminal. Let's go to shell new window with basic settings. Again, this is just Mac stuff, but this is standard Unix, Unix command line stuff. Uh, so this will be the same or very similar on Linux. Again, I'll go to that directory. So slash user local MySQL bin. And now I can connect with the MySQL command line tool. So I'm going to just type my, well, I have to type dot slash MySQL. On Windows, it would just be the command name without the dot slash, or at least last time I used Windows, that was the case, hyphen u root and I run that. Now I've got a MySQL command line. So there are two programs here, MySQL D, the actual server itself, the actual database. And there's also the MySQL um, command line tool, which enables you to connect to that database as a client. As we say, you're a client connecting to that database server. And we're going to be issuing these commands in the workbench in future, but I just wanted to show you this to, to help explain how this all works. Now I can issue a MySQL command, and on the command line, you have to terminate your commands with a semicolon. So the simplest command that we can start off with is show space databases semicolon, and I hit return. And these are the different databases that I've got already by default in my MySQL server. So you'll probably see something there. Hopefully you will. Um, so although we've got one database server program, we can have different databases in that. So the different databases can be used, for example, by different programs, or we can create a new database in there 
whenever we want to practice MySQL. Now I'm gonna just quit that now, so I'll type quit and it just says bye and we can close this. Um, to actually shut down this server from a terminal, um, you could, like on Windows, you could use your process manager or I forget what it's called on Windows, but you have something that you can bring up to just shut down, force processes to quit. I'm gonna use a kind of Unix command line here again and I'm gonna to go to shell new window on my Mac. And so this, if, you, if you're not familiar with this, don't worry at all, but I'm gonna type ps hyphen ef to give me a list of processes in Unix. And I can then actually modify that by saying a pipe character and then saying grep my SQL. And that will narrow down the list of processes in a Unix type system to show you which ones are running that have my SQL in the name. So if I do that, we can see that um, MySQL D is running here, and that's the process ID 857. So I'm going to say sudo to run as admin, kill 857. And we've hopefully shut it down. Well, it doesn't look very shut down. So let's try this. Yeah, I think actually we need this one here, 909. Let's try that. The first one was the actual thing that I'm typing now. Let's run that. And with a bit of luck, yeah, it's shut down. So if you have, if you if you do try this and you get lost and you have terrible problems shutting it down, the thing to do would be just restart your computer. Hopefully after that, it will work as normal. And I, I will repeat my advice that if you do get into any difficulties with this, you can't resolve them. Don't be afraid to Google it. It varies from system to system what you'll have to do, but someone will have run into the error almost certainly that you're encountering and you can find that usually via Google searches. So this all looks good. And in the next tutorial, we're going to connect via the MySQL Workbench instead of via the MySQL Client. And we're going to start issuing commands. So until next time, happy coding.